All right, so I am out at Rockaway, which is another one of my favorite spots to paint. Uh, this place is really close to home, so I come here often. There's this rock out here behind me that I painted before, and I just thought it might make a good subject today. The light is changing super fast, which is typical for this time of year. So anyway, I'm set up. Let me show you what I got going on. All right, so I'm using liquid as my medium. I've got extra in this container here. Uh, odorless mineral spirits, extra in this container here. Uh, my usual assortment of brushes, a couple number 10s, a flat and a bright, and then also, uh, I believe this is a number six flat and then a uh, number two for sketching and then a simple palette again i'm using titanium white cadmium yellow medium yellow ochre burnt sienna uh alizarin crimson ultramarine blue and a little bit of phthalo blue uh there's a little leftover cadmium red light right here uh so i may use some of that we'll see and i'm painting on a 16 by 20 inch masonite panel that i gessoed myself with three coats of gesso uh, last coat has some pumice in it to give it some tooth and texture and absorbency. Uh, I was asked um, what sort of paints I use and it's kind of a mixture of Winton brand uh, and also Utrecht brand. Although I'm not like particular about paints, any kind of quality paint will do. I've used Gamblin in the past as well. Uh, but I really do like the Winton titanium white and ultramarine blue. Uh, I haven't really tried their other colors. That's a student grade paint, but the quality seems to be really good. Uh, the price is good too. And as you know, if you're a painter, you go through a lot of white. So by using a good quality, inexpensive white, you're really gonna cut down on some of the expenses of oil painting. I am thinking something like this. All right, so I left the sketch in real time so you can see that I don't spend a lot of time. I'm just trying to get the elements in the right place to see if it looks right to me. I don't want to get involved in detail because I'm just going to be blocking things in. So it's just to get the major elements in the right place. So let's take a look. Uh, the placement of this rock is like really important. Um, I kind of like the waves in the foreground too. They come off in kind of a radial fashion. All right, I'm mixing up some shadow colors using alizarin crimson and ultramarine, and I'm gonna thin it a bit with liquin. All right, so I just did my block in and I am just approximating colors. I'm not trying to get too specific, uh, doing the best I can, but I know that I'm gonna come back in and adjust the colors and adjust the value. So let's take a look. Basically, we've got the water that's in the shadow here, the rocks, and uh, just kind of broke it down into the simplest elements. And then each of these areas is gonna get broken up uh, further. Obviously, there'll be some waves in here. There'll be some variety. Um, and then also the darks. I'm gonna have to reinforce the darks because they're not that dark. But that just gives me my overall composition. Even though these rocks are really dark, I'm seeing some warm colors in there. Um, 
that might be a little bit too, the value might be too light on that, but I'm just adding like uh, almost pure yellow ochre in there with a little bit of burnt sienna just to give some color, uh, warm colors in these cliffs here. All right, typical plein air adventure here. The sun has disappeared, so I've lost all my light. So since I've already established my shadow patterns, even though the shadows are gone off the water here, I know where my light was, and now I can do the rest from memory. All right, so it's definitely a challenge finishing a painting from memory, but I've done it plenty of times. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. I'm gonna keep going and we'll see what happens. Okay, and here's what I came up with. Uh, I was mostly focusing on getting really bright light right around that rock right there. And then also, uh, you know, just nice sort of wave action in the shadow space down below. Uh, one thing I did do was I put a lot of really saturated yellow uh, around uh, so that the combination between the blue and the yellow here would create a feeling of light. And I think there is like a convincing feeling of light here. So overall, I think I spent maybe an hour on this painting. It's hard to tell because, you know, doing the camera stuff as well, but it was really fast. So it just goes to show you can do uh, a large canvas fairly quickly or a large panel. This is 16 by 20 in less than an hour. All right, so mostly use this one here, which is a number 10. Uh, this is a Tuscan series by Utrecht, although it doesn't matter. It's a flat number 10. You can see it compared to my finger, it's a fairly fat brush. Uh, this one I use for some smaller rocks. And uh, also I sketched with this one too. This is a number six flat Tuscan series, synthetic. And then this one here is a number two that I use to kind of just do minimal touch-ups at the very end. Sometimes it can be beneficial to have a time limit. I think that's one of the good things about plein air painting is because conditions are changing so quickly, you're often forced to work quickly and not overthink things, not overwork things. And I think it results in better paintings, at least for me. Um, so I'm, I'll be interested to get this one home and put it in a frame and see what I think. Uh, anyway, as usual, thanks for hanging out, guys. Let me know if you have any questions down below and um, I will see you in the next video.